right. Uh, guess what? Another Jim Lee video. Um, this one here, we're going to look at Marvel Age 104. Um, bought this when I was, uh, I would say I was still a kid. So let's go ahead and check this sucker out right here. Let's move this stuff out of the way. All right, so Marvel Age Magazine. Um, essentially a marketing tool for Marvel Comics to let you know kind of what's up, what's coming out. Uh, very, very cool cover by Jim Lee. Uh, I only bought three Marvel Ages in, in my life. Um, I don't own the one that I actually want, which is an old school uh, Excalibur one. With a, I believe that was an Alan Davis cover. But anyways, uh, this one here, very cool cover. Um, you can see right here, Jim Lee, unpublished art interview profile. Wow. Um, I bought this from Cassidy Comics. No longer in business. Way back in the day, if anyone from uh, Atwater, California, you'd remember that shop. Little shop. Didn't last a whole lot of time, but they always had the coolest stuff. Uh, let's see, I bought this one. Um... There was a Darkhawk one as well. Darkhawk was actually hot back in the day when it first came out. And then the other one I think was the... Oh, it was. It was the uh, the X-Force preview one uh, with a new cover. It had like a Cable and Shatterstar. I got that floating around somewhere in a long box. If I ever find it, I'll pull it out. I actually have some sketches on it uh, from Liefeld from way back in the day. So uh, I'll show that off. Uh, just pen and ink drawings. I don't, I, don't, I don't even recall where I had him do those. Um, but it was way before I was working for Extreme. So, uh, let's see here. So, um, first off, I'm going to point this out. And this is something I didn't notice until way later. He's got a fog pump machine here. And uh, it says, Mignola tested. Uh, that's in reference to Mike Mignola, the famous artist. And you see, uh, that was a trope in the 90s. So, Jim's kind of poking fun at it. He's got the smoke machine, pumping out smokes. So he doesn't have to draw the feet to a uh, very, very good-looking Psylocke here. Uh, then you also get uh, other people in the studio. So I'm assuming homage was already a thing. Th this right here came out right before uh, X-Men number one, uh, Jim and um, Claremont's relaunch. <clears throat> uh, Scott Williams, bonus incurutus or whatever it says, uh, feed it own risk, no loose pins or maybe. I don't know. I, I guess that's supposed to be Scott Williams in there. Uh, he's got a bunch of... Uh, I'm going to assume those are John Byrne. John Byrne, uh... <laughs> Uncanny X-Men books. I have no clue who this is. Uh, what me worry? I have no idea who this is. This is very obviously Will Spertaccio. Very obviously. Uh, Will's Bob called. Will's someone called. And he's sleeping. He's been asleep. So apparently... I don't know, maybe there's some jokes. Maybe Wills used to sleep in the studio or was always asleep. Um, and I'm going to assume also this might be Brandon Shaw. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but he was there at the very beginning and also um, was involved with, you know, scripting the Wildcat books after uh, Jim left Marvel. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, Wolverine looks pretty cool. Diet soda. <laughs> instead of beer and again uh it's all about this right here but yeah this is a pretty cool issue i'll just thumb through it and see what i remember from it uh more marvel marvel masterworks so i think that this right here is about the uh marvel started doing the hardcover collections of older books that were unattainable because of price uh, this is this is way before so this would be what 91 yeah september of 91 so right at the end of 91 uh, this is prior to omnibuses. I don't remember when omnibuses actually became a thing, but they're more recent. They're closer to today's time than this time. Um, let's see. So you got some other stuff here. Let's see. You got a Jim Lee uh, interview with a colorized sketch right here, drawn by Jim, inked by Scott. I've seen the original of this. I think on comic art fans. Uh, you get the full spread in flat form with a little bit of uh, tonal adjustments for some shading uh, of the X-Men number one cover here. Uh, talks about how that came into play. Everyone get amped up. Buy 50 copies of each cover. All four covers. Uh, five covers. You got to get that D or the E, right? Cover E, the flip out one. 
uh, cool panel there, Magneto. And then you got us uh, early Jim Lee art right here. So Jim Lee has a, uh, I don't even know. I don't know how old he is. This is a 1977 drawing by Jim. He might have been 10 years old. I'm not really sure. <clears throat> uh, more panels, more talking about Jim coming up and, and just adoring the X-Men and how you know, he ended up being the professional artist on the book and then getting his own series. Uh, Rise and Stardom. Colossus is my favorite X-Man, by the way. Um, I don't know. It talks about reprints. This right here talks about the X-Men Toy Biz figures. They were a huge deal in the early 90s. Uh, let's see. Stan Soapbox. This was about... Oh, I remember what this was. Uh, Amazing Fantasy. The issue before Spidey. So what was it? 14, I think. Um, so right here it talks about uh, Jim, what's the name, Salakrup, 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 uh, Amazing Fantasy 14. Yeah, so apparently their claims is that Amazing Fantasy 14, this character that looks suspiciously like, drawn by Ditko, suspiciously like Peter Parker, if you look at these panels here, this is a short story reprinted in here of what they claim is the first mutant. That, I mean, that tell me that isn't Peter Parker, dude. Uh, but anyways, the man in the sky, this guy can fly. I guess he's a mutant. <clears throat> the claim is he's the first Marvel mutant in print. So, uh, yeah. But, yeah, uh, scripted by Stan, drawn by Ditko. You get that right there. So, reprinted there. Um, I don't think this was ever revisited again. I think that's his id. I, I actually have never read that. I've had this book for... 30 years, I guess, by now. Uh, let's see. Dark Water. Yeah, they had the license for Dark Water. So those comics were coming out. <clears throat> Get some advertisements right there. Um, is that Mike Golden? I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure. I'm a little hit and miss with Mike Golden. Sometimes, sometimes I recognize the work. Sometimes I don't. Um, let's see. And then you got... Uh, it's Your Dime. Start Talking. Straight up, Spidey. Uh, yeah, some John Byrne Fantastic Four right there. I think this was on that Sideways issue, wasn't it? Um, I don't own this book, but I remember seeing a John Byrne Fantastic Four book printed Sideways. The cover was, at least. Uh, and then a badass. This was a card. This was a Ghost Rider a trading card from um, drawn by Art Adams. Uh, what would it be? Marvel series, I think it was series two, might be series one. I got both of them in a binder. I I was a, I was I was big simping for Marvel back in the day. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Uh, if you guys don't have this or interested in it, um, it has a little bit of insight on the uh, uh, Jim's rise to stardom and how uh, the X Men book came into being. A little bit about his history, not really in depth. You know, they they only had so many pages to work with, but um. Yeah, lots of words, a lot to read here. A little bit about you know Punisher War Journal and whatnot, I guess too. It's been a while. I just I found this. You know, I want to do a little video on it in case you're not aware of the book. But yeah, Marvel Age, uh, 104, a um, lot of tropes, and um, yeah, you can let me know if you have any idea who this is. I I had used to think it was like Carl Settler, but I don't think it is. I have I have no idea, no clue who that is. Maybe Art Tiber. Who knows? All right, guys, thanks.